So many charts, numbers, and graphs. There's so much data on the coronavirus pandemic, it can feel overwhelming at times. But if you're looking for just one number to help you understand how we're doing, hopefully that does exist. It's called the growth factor, and it can quickly and clearly tell us whether the coronavirus outbreak is getting better or worse. Basically, the growth factor measures how fast the number of new cases is going up or down. Here's the main thing you need to understand. To be sure we're staying on top of the outbreak, we must keep this number, the growth factor, below 1. If the growth factor is above 1, that means the number of new cases each day is going up. If it stays consistently above 1, that's the cause for concern. If it's below 1, we're getting the outbreak under control. Calculating the daily growth factor is simple. Take today's new reported cases and divide it by yesterday's new cases. Of course, the growth factor will change over time. Even though Australia's growth factor has been below 1 for a few weeks, that could change. Australia seems to be successfully flattening the curve, but the fight against coronavirus is likely to be a long one. Even if the number of people sick with COVID-19 gets quite low, the virus could start spreading quickly again without ongoing vigilance. But for now at least, things are headed in the right direction. There's a few other things to keep in mind when thinking about the growth factor. A figure like this is only ever as good as the data being collected. So when reading the growth factor, there are two extra parameters to keep in mind, community transmission and testing. The number of coronavirus cases originating from overseas has been decreasing drastically. Experts say that the rate of local spread by community transmission, which make up a rising proportion of new cases, may be a better indicator of just how well our physical distancing measures are working. Another question mark around the data is testing. We'll only find cases where we look for them, and in the past few weeks, much of Australia's testing has been focused on people arriving from overseas and their close contacts. The unknown number of undetected cases currently in the community may prove crucial to keeping Australia's outbreak manageable. Several states are expanding testing criteria to include a broader cross-section of the community, so it's important to remember that any rise in the growth factor could be, in part, a result of more widespread testing. Finally, it's worth remembering that even though the growth factor is a great litmus test for how well we're keeping Australia's outbreak in check, other numbers are important too. For example, a growth factor of 0.99 in the US is still a huge problem because the number of new cases they're seeing there every day is already very big. So how are other countries doing? The growth factor can also provide a useful insight into outbreaks around the world and how different countries are faring in their efforts to bring coronavirus under control. These charts focus on the countries with the largest overall coronavirus outbreaks around the world, as well as some of Australia's nearest neighbours. Looking at these global figures, remember to factor testing regimes into your thinking. If one country is testing a lot and another testing very little, it's going to have a major impact on how their growth factors stack up.